Amen. Reading from 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 31, everybody. Standing and giving honor to the Lord by do a public reading together, confessing the word of God, which, in which there is so much power. 2 Samuel 22, verse 31. And as for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried, and He is a buckler to all them that trust in Him. Amen. You may be seated. Lord, we thank you for adding your blessing and your anointing as we minister in your word, my Lord, my God. Amen. So that we may stand before you to hear the well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We live in challenging times and uh, we need a faith that works and not a faith that is just an idea or a concept, but it's, it is practical and applicable in everyday life. Amen. So we have to, uh, to base our faith solely in the Word of God. The Word of God is our final authority. Amen. So that's how you start uh, any conversation. The Word of God is the final authority. You know, there is this science called in the biblical area called apologetics, one of them. And uh, apologetics um, is to uh, give uh, an answer to those who ask, be ready to give an account to those who want to find out about your faith. Amen. But there is, again in apologetics, there is a subdivision which is called the presuppositional apologetics. Presuppositional apologetics means we don't start the conversation apart from the Bible because the other person will be offended. We start by presupposing that the Bible is the Word of God. You want my opinion on that? Which is God's opinion? There is no reason to argue with anybody without the Word. Because you are trying with your, with your own efforts. And again, there are those believers that they use apologetics, uh, regular apologetics, not, pre, not presuppositional, to try to, be, to try to deal with their questions and everything. But without the written word, you don't have the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen? But to presuppose that this is the word of God and I speak with authority. It is authoritative, not authoritarian, but authoritative with authority. It has authority. For example, you know, we, we talk about um, the books of the Bible and the canon of the Bible, canon of the Bible, or canonas des Biblio, which means simply haragas, riga opostolemis de Gipro, haragas, e metron, metron, it's a measure, amen? So uh, the canon are uh, the 39 books of the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. And, um, uh, and uh, we, we say, you know, some people say, well, our church uh, did the canon. Well, no church did make the canon, but it was given by God. They say, but it was in the 4th century, 5th century, during the ecumenical councils, councils and all of these. So the answer to all this is that the word of God didn't wait until church people and church leaders gathered together to authorize the Bible. The Bible is the authorized word of God and it has an inherent authority within itself. Now, the church throughout the centuries recognized the authority, but the authority was right there in the books of the Bible. So, by the time they were written, they were God-inspired. 
I may say something, but I cannot be absolute. That's the Lord. Amen? My books are not God's word. They may help you to study God's word, but they are fallible. For example, if I sit down and go through them, I need to revise them again and again and again. This book has no updates and no upgrades. The perfect doesn't need to upgrade it because you, by trying to do so, you downgrade it. So we believe the Bible is the word of God. But anyway, let me tell you something very interesting. How many of you have heard about the Gospel of Thomas? Gospel of Thomas. Okay, so born again believers are asking these questions about the apocryphal uh, New Testament supposedly books, but uh, they are apocrypha, apocryphal or apocrypha. It means they are not the word of God. So uh, because they have all kinds of uh, errors and they were written after the New Testament, much later, and also all the apocryphal books of the Old Testament were written in between the Old Testament, Malachi, and Matthew. So it was the 400 of years of silence of the prophetic word of God, from God, and all of a sudden, because God didn't speak, the men spoke, and they tried to insert them into the Bible. That's the case with the New Testament also. They came in the second century plus, and they started giving names that they didn't belong to them, but they gave, they knew that in order to accept a book of the Old New Testament, had to have one of them, one of the measurements and one of the values it had to have, it was apostolicity, meaning that it derived from the apostles. And they, the apocryphal books many times carry the names of the apostles, like the gospel, not just of Thomas, but of Peter. I'm going to just give you very quick insertions for your sakes, for you to know because it came to my attention. So you are ready. Don't try to go beyond the books of the Bible. Stay there. This is the inspired of word of God. This is the authoritative, authoritative word of God. Amen. So listen to how the gospel of Thomas ends. Listen to this now. And it says, the last chapter of the so-called gospel of Thomas, which is not of Thomas, says, first of all, it was a Gnosticism book. It was Gnostic. It, were, it was based on an esoteric uh, revelation that only the few had. And uh, they, uh, went to go, uh, they went to go back to the primordial situation, the state in which man and woman were before the fall and where the woman was in man and they had a problem with women. Listen to this now. Listen to this in the Gospel of Tom, supposedly. Uh, his disciples said to him, on, wo on what day will the kingdom come? It cometh not with observation, they will not say low here or low there, but the kingdom of the Father is spread out upon the earth and men do not see it. Then Simon Peter said to, him, to them, let Mary go forth from among us, for women are not worthy of the life. Women are not worthy of the life. So you start by the end of this so-called gospel and you find there it's so devilish. Amen. So you see, it's not, uh, it doesn't have apostolicity. It was not from God. Listen to the last portion, which affects us today. So this, the same devil, the same patterns, but also the same God, the same God patterns. And I want you to be able to discern. Now, listen to this. 
Behold, I shall lead her that I may make her male in order that she also may become a living spirit like you males. For every woman who makes herself male shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So do I need to read the rest? Good. Amen. Just knowing by how, only by how it ends. So it, that's it, because it was Gnostic. From the Google Gnosticismos. So that's why they mentioned the Lord Jesus not dying on the cross. But an angel came in his place and all of this nonsense that the Muslims take and build their theology from the gospel of Thomas. So you see all of these things. And now we have all these transgender. There is only one word, uh, biblical trans, and we are all transgressors. We all have transgressed paranomisame. We all have transgressed the word of God. And we need to come back and be born again by the spirit of the Lord. Now, this is the gospel of Thomas. So take it out of the way. Now, the gospel of Peter. The Gospel of Peter supposedly men, uh, shows but you, you may find some good things and believers saying, why not accepting it? That's why. Then it says, uh, it shows the Lord Jesus after the resurrection coming out of the tomb and being so tall as the clouds. And then the cross uh, gets up and walks after supposedly the Lord and the cross speaks. So all of these are all imagination of people. So get out of there and stay within the word of God. Just trust the people that God set over you so that you will be, you will avoid all this trouble and this hassle in your life. We trust the word of God. Amen. That's why coming back to our text. Verse 31, 2 Samuel 22, 31. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He's a buckler to all them that trust in Him. The word, the word is a buckler. The word is the rock, the word of God. The inspired word of God. Go back to the word. Take every handle the word. The, deal with the word as the word of God. Can we go please to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. There is so much power in receiving the word of God as the word of God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. Paul says to the Thessalonians. That I was so glad that you received the word as the word of God, as it truly is. But we are bound to give thanks, uh, thanks all the way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the uh, belief of the truth. Sorry, go, go to 1 Thessalonians 2.13, not 2. Bless the Lord for this verse too. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of God. Which ye heard of us. You, you see you have to be able to discern. This is the word of God that you received from us. It says here that uh, you received, you received it. Not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. It effectually works in you, energy. Amen. The word of God is energized. The word of God is being applied and the word of God is full of energy new age will speak about 
energy coming from the earth, walk barefooted because you're closer to the earth and the magnetic fields of the earth will give you strength and power and you communicate with the demons and the yoga and uh, kundalini spirit. I explained to you a few things about that. Brothers and sisters, it's time to say we receive the word of God as the word of God. No matter if I read from 1st Chronicles and 2nd Chronicles, and I know these are just chronicles, meaning these are historical books, but there is power in there. It's the word of God. Have the patience to go through. So many Christians don't even read the Bible. I mean the whole thing. We should read it reverentially, Steph. Νομίζω ότι θα είπε η γυναίκα μου ότι θα τελειώσουμε πεντέμιση το απόγευμα σήμερα. Ναι, 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 αμήν. Στις 12 φεύγουν οι μισοί. 12 και 10 οι άλλοι μισοί. Γυρίζω από εδώ και αρχίζω. Μια καινούργια ανακοίνωση. If there is a move of the spirit, You can go, get up and go, but we will continue. That's it. Okay. So, amen. As for God, his way is perfect. Amen. It effectually works in your life. Oh. 